March 17, 1962, Kalpana Chawla, the first ever woman from India, leaped beyond the clouds and reached space, was born in Karnal, Haryana. She was an American astronaut and engineer who first flew on Space Shuttle Columbia in 1997 as a mission specialist and primary robotic arm operator. Kalpana's original date of birth was altered to July 1, 1961 to make her eligible for the matriculation exam. It was in 2003 that the fate of this national hero of India met with a tragic ending along with seven crew members when Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated during its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. After her demise, She was posthumously awarded the Congressional Space Medal of Honor. Various streets, buildings and universities and institutions have been named after this very national hero of India. Hailing from Multan district of West Punjab, now Pakistan, Kalpana's parents came to Karnal in Haryana during partition. Her father Banarasi Lal Chawla took up several petty jobs from working as a street hawker, a clothes seller, to a metal fabricator to run the family. He had eventually set up a tire manufacturing business while his wife Sanyogita managed the household. Just like the name she chose, Kalpana was a highly creative and imaginative child. On hot summer days, while her family slept on the roof of their small house, the little girl would stay awake for hours to watch the twinkling stars in the night sky. Such was her fascination with stars that once when her classmate built a geographical map of India on the floor of their classroom, She covered the ceiling completely with stars, little sparkling dots on black chart papers. Another thing that caught young Kalpana's fancy were aeroplanes. Back then, Karnal was one of a few Indian towns with a flying club called Karnal Aviation Club. As her house was just a few kilometers away from the club, she would often clamber up to the roof and watch them go roaring over her head waving her hand at the pilot if the plane flew lower over the house in an interview she gave before the colombian mission kalpana recalled how she and her brother would be on their bicycles trying to see where the aeroplanes were headed she said We asked my dad if we could get a ride in one of those planes and he did get us a ride on the pushbuck and a glider. I think that's really my closest link to aerospace engineering. Also, growing up, we knew of J.R.D. Tata who flew some of the first mail flights in India. One of which now hangs in an aerodrome out there. Seeing this aeroplane and just knowing what this person has done during those years definitely captivated my imagination. Kalpana carried this photo of him showing the arrival of the mail flight from Karachi in 1932 on her first mission aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia in 1997. This was a heartfelt tribute from a young girl to her hero. to a man who had inspired her to travel all the way from a small town in Punjab into the far reaches of outer space her own personal tribute to JRD Tata imagine this for a moment this young girl had carried into space on her very first mission an old sepia photograph of a man whose pioneering deeds had sparked her own ambitions yes she was telling us We need such pioneers to inspire us in our own lives. Such legends light a fire in our minds and our hearts and make us aim for the stars themselves. Drawing aeroplanes in school while her friends drew mountains, forests and rivers on being asked to draw scenery. 
Kalpana would draw colorful aeroplanes flying amidst clouds. She also loved making aeroplanes models in her craft classes. All round her. Hard working and focused, Kalpana was a good student who enjoyed subjects like English, Hindi and Geography. However, her favorite subject was science. Other than dancing, she also enjoyed cycling, running and playing badminton. She used to paint, do rangoli, go for a picnic in jungle with her brother, used to talk to trees and birds. A complete tomboy, she kept her hair short, never put on any makeup and rarely paid attention to fashion. Life after school After her class 10 board examinations, she got admission in DAV College for her higher studies. It was here that an interesting, almost visionary incident took place. During a mathematics class, Kalpana's teacher was explaining the concept of a null set, empty set in algebra. To give an example, she said that a set of Indian women astronauts was a classic example of null set as till date no Indian women had become an astronaut. To everybody's surprise, Kalpana cleverly said, Who knows ma'am, one day this set may not be empty. At that time, no one in the classroom could imagine, let alone know that the girl who had spoken these lines would herself go on to fill the set. Strong determination for aeronautical engineering. After completing her class 12 board exams with flying colors, Kalpana decided to pursue her dream of an engineering career. Her father was not in favor of Kalpana's doing engineering as he believed that it was not a suitable career option for girls. He advised her to become a doctor or a school teacher. But Kalpana was determined to become a flight engineer and for that, an engineering degree was essential. Kalpana had her mother's unconditional support and her father finally gave in when he realized that her mind was made up. So Kalpana left for Chandigarh where she took admission in Punjab Engineering College. During counseling for the selection of various engineering courses, she chose aeronautical engineering, the only girl to do so. This surprise counselors tried their best to dissuade her from joining aeronautical engineering as it had limited job opportunities in the country, but Kalpana refused to budge. When they asked her what was her second option, she replied that she had none. College life. In college, Kalpana put her heart and soul into her studies. As there was no girls' hostel, she lived alone in a tiny room over a garage, cycling to college every day. In her free time, she devoted herself to learning karate and reading books by her favorite authors. She enjoyed listening to classic rock especially of the 1970s British band Deep Purple and Sufi music. Books, Magazines, Editor, Projects Kalpana also loved collecting magazines and books on aviation and would read them from cover to cover. She became a student editor at her college magazine and the joint secretary of the college's Aero Club and Astro Society. Always enthusiastic about working on a new project, she surprised her professors and seniors by presenting a paper of time lapse in space, a topic that dealt with Albert Einstein's theories of relativity. At the college's annual conference in her first year itself, the first women aeronautical engineer. In 1982, 
Kalpana secured the third rank in her batch to become the first women aeronautical engineer to pass out from her college. This was, however, just a stepping stone to much greater heights that she would achieve in the years ahead. A good academic record and active involvement in the PEC's Aero and Astro Society assured Kalpana easy admission into the master course in aerospace engineering at the University of Texas in USA. Wedding and Career It was during this time that Kalpana met and fell in love with Jean Perry Harrison, a flying instructor and an aviation author. She married him in 1983 and it was from him that she learned how to fly a plane. Kalpana held a certificated flight instructor rating from aeroplanes, gliders and commercial pilot licenses for single and multi-engine aeroplanes, seaplanes and gliders after becoming a nationalized U.S. citizen in 1991 April. Chavla applied for for the NASA Astronaut Corps. She joined the Corps in March 1995 and was selected for her first flight in 1996. To renew the license, she has to pay a huge amount yearly, but she did not hesitate. Kalpana and NASA In 1988, Kalpana completed her doctorate in aerospace engineering from the University of Colorado at Boulder. She began working at NASA's Ames Research Center, working on power lift computational fluid dynamics in the same year. In 1993, she joined Overseas Methods Inclusive as Vice President and research scientist specializing in simulation of moving multiple body problems. Space Missions In December 1994, Kalpana Chavla reported to the Johnson Space Center in March 1995 as an astronaut candidate in the 15th group of astronauts. The rest, as they say, is history. In November 1996, she was assigned as a mission specialist and prime robotic arm operator on Space Shuttle STS-87, November 19 to December 5, 1997. First Space Mission As part of her first mission, Kalpana traveled 10.4 million miles in 252 orbits of the Earth and lodged 376 hours and 34 minutes in space becoming the first Indian origin women to go to space. Less than five years later, she was cleared by NASA to fly aboard Columbia for a second time. Second Space Mission In 2001, Chavla was selected for her second flight as part of the crew of STS-107. This mission was repeatedly delayed due to scheduling conflicts and technical problems such as the July 2002 discovery of cracks in the shuttle engine flow liners. On 16 January 2003, Chavla finally returned to space aboard Space Shuttle Columbia on the ill-fated STS-107 mission. The crew performed nearly 80 experiments studying Earth and space science, advanced technology development, and astronaut health and safety. During the launch of STS-107, Columbia's 28th mission, a piece of foam insulated broke off from the space shuttle external tank and stuck the left wing of the orbiter. When Columbia re-entered the atmosphere of Earth, the damage allowed hot atmospheric gases to penetrate and destroy the internal wing structure, which caused the spacecraft to become unstable and break apart. After the disaster, space shuttle flight operators were suspended 
for more than two years. Kalpana died on February 1, 2003, in the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster, along with the other six crew members when the Columbia disintegrated over Texas during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, shortly before it was scheduled to conclude its 28th mission, STS-107. Her remains were identified along with those of the rest of the crew members and were cremated and scattered at Zion National Park in Ocha in accordance with her wishes. In her last email to the students of Punjab Engineering College, Kalpana wrote, The path from dreams to success doesn't exist. May you have the vision to find it, the courage to get onto it, and the perseverance to follow it. Honors and Recognition Chavla was posthumously awarded the Congressional Space Medal of Honor, and several streets, universities, and institutions have been named in her honor. She is regarded as a national hero in India. The University of Texas at Arlington, where Chavla obtained a Master's of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering in 1984, opened a dormitory named Kalpana Chavla Hall in 2004. In addition, the university dedicated the Kalpana Chavla Memorial on 3rd May 2010 in Niederman Hall, one of the primary buildings in the College of Engineering. In New York, number 74 street is given the name of Kalpana Chavla. In America, there are numbers or letters given to the streets. No names of any persons are given. First time in the history of America, streets are named after any person. Art Circle Steve Morrissey from the band Deep Purple created the song Contact Loss in memory of the Columbia tragedy along with her interest in the band. The song can be found on the album Bananas. Novelist Peter David named the shuttlecraft the Chavla after the astronaut in his 2007 Star Trek novel. Star Trek The Next Generation Before Dishonor. NASA has dedicated a supercomputer to Chavla. The 14th contracted North Crew Gurman Cygnus spacecraft mission delivering supplies to the ISS was named the SS Kalpana Chavla after her. On 5th February 2003, the Prime Minister of India, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, announced that the meteorological series of satellites, METSAT, was to be renamed Kalpana. The first satellite of the series, METSAT-1, launched by India on 12 September 2002, was renamed Kalpana-1. Asteroid 51826 Kalpana Chavla, one of seven named after the Columbia Screw. The NASA's Mars Exploration Rover mission has named seven peaks in a chain of hills named the Columbia Hills after each of the seven astronauts lost in the Columbia shuttle disaster. One of them is Chavla Hill, named after Chavla. The Kalpana Chavla Award was instituted by the government of Karnataka in 2004 to recognize young women scientists. The Kalpana Chavla ISU Scholarship Fund was founded by alumni of the International Space University ISU in 2010 to support Indian women's participation in international space education programs. The Kalpana Chavla Memorial Scholarship Program was instituted by the Indian Students Association ISA at the University of Texas at El Paso, UTEP in 2005 for meritorious graduate students. The Kalpana Chavla Outstanding Recent Alumni Award at the University of Colorado given since 1983 was renamed after Kalpana Chavla. Interesting facts about Kalpana 
simplicity in life. Kalpana denied to stay in hostel because the girls there were very fashionable. Her father's friend was also industrialist. He had a bungalow of 14 rooms, but she did not stay there. Instead, she stayed outside in a garage. She used to do her haircut till end. She did not wear iron clothes to save electricity for those who have more need. She never went to hotel. She prepared food by herself. Her father wanted to take her to hotel, but she gave him and her uncle mutter to peel and made mutter rice in her small room in Chandigarh. There were no dishes, so they ate on a paper of Sunday supplement. In spite of her busy schedule, she kept in touch with her school and college in India. Thanks to her efforts, every year two students from Tanjur Balniketan were given the opportunity to visit NASA. The students would stay with their Kalpana Didi, who would make Indian meals especially for them. Chavla Saab and Principal When she got degree in Aeronautical Engineering from Chandigarh University, she applied for MS in Texas University. Her father was on a world tour then. He did not know about it. When he returned back, Monto was not there. So the next day, he went to her college and asked Principal, Where is my Monto? Principal said to the other man in the room, This Chavla Saab has only money and nothing else. Chavla Saab was very angry. He asked Principal again. Principal said, You go and ask yourself. He asked again. Principal said, Your motto has taken a job of lecturer here. Papaji was very upset. He felt that he's a millionaire and can make this daughter MD anywhere, so what is she doing here? She took the job because she had a desire to teach things that she learned. Pyon said, 10 minutes to go for her class. Papaji stood there when the class was over. Monto saw him and like a kid kept her head on his shoulder and go on beating him on his chest and said, you spoiled my career and cried like a child. Going to America. She said she has applied for MS in Texas and the interview was on 31st August 1982 and they are meeting today on 29th August. Papaji said, do you want to go really? She said, forget it. How will I go? No passport or visa. Papaji asked her to trust him, went with her to the principal, asked him whether he has any objections if she resigns. Principal asked, why resign? She wants to go to America. Principal said, then no objection. Papaji had four friends in town, one Inspector General, one Collector, one DSP and one Cabinet Minister. With their help, he arranged for her passport. What about visa? He phoned American Embassy and got also that. Date 30th August. Flight was available but was late due to some fault. Papaji asked another friend in America to take permission for the interview if she got late. As soon as he came making trunk call, the plane has gone. This way, her Papaji fulfilled her wish. Not only her, but of all four children. They selected their life partners as per their wish. All had intercaste marriages. All get their desired education. Personal Life America When her father and mother went to visit her in USA, there was no furniture in her flat. 
Mother scolded her as she used to get salary in lakhs of dollars and not using it for herself. Mother asked, what she does with all this money? She laughed and said there are various ways to spend money. That secret was revealed only after she passed away. She had second hand home. Why? When asked by her mother, she said, if I had new home, I would have addiction for it and could not go out. I have to wander whole universe. She had no washing machine. She said it requires 40 gallons of water and she does not want to waste a single drop of water. She used to wash her clothes by herself on a bathroom wall. One cloth in two marks. Why on wall? There is dust on floor, so more water is needed, but from wall, water comes down and cleans floor as well. Daily lifestyle. She had two second-hand cars, tires smooth rounded, father had tire manufacturing industry. He said to replace the tires with his money. She said, I go to work by bicycle. One day, insurance people visited her home. There was a tree whose branches were about to fall, they said. She asked them to raise the premium but not to cut the tree as there were birds on the tree. She used to feed them. She made a weekly chart of daily feed. She told her husband to feed the birds according to the chart when she went in space. One day her toilet choked up due to the branches of tree. Plumber cleared and asked her to clear the tree. Kalpana replied, Now I have learned to clear the pipes. Next time I'll do it myself. No need for you to come. Humanity Kalpana Chamla was a very extraordinary person. To get money to a boot repair man, she went by walking 20 miles. Her boot was completely torn apart. She did not want to get another animal killed to make a new boot. She was passionate about all the things in nature, flowers, animals, birds, etc. She gave the man $12, whereas the price of a new boot is $10. Why? Because the man had no work and he was the only one person who did the repairs in the whole area. This was the tale told by her father when he had went to visit her and she was late. She said nobody bothers about repairs, old shoes are just thrown away. She asked her mother not to purchase made in China products. Do not bring negative vibrations to my house. Mother said, you have feeling that the whole world is yours, then why discrimination? Kalpana replied, not to misunderstand her as Chinese use child labor and she did not want to commit that sin. What a great human being she was, spiritually uplifted. Reason why she left early, maybe. Fall from space. In 1997, when she first went to space, then Prime Minister Indra Kumar Gujral asked her, How my India looks from space? She said, do not restrict me to one corner of universe. The whole world is my native land. Her yarn has 45 minutes of day and 45 minutes of night. It was rotating at a speed of 26,000 kilometers per hour. She said, She is lucky than UPM to see her Hindustan 15 times in 24 hours. In 2003, Kalpana again went in space. There were 1,200 tests to pass and 2,800 candidates. The tests were about emotional quotient, intelligent quotient, spiritual quotient, candidates, family, friends, society, country. Whether there are any psychological issues, whether he or she can live in submarine or spacecraft. Space travel. Kalpana passed all these tests, got selected and went in space. 
Then the Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee asked her, How do you feel in space? I am enjoying the happiness of Nirvikalpa Samadhi, she replied. Did she knew her fate? Kalpana is known as scientist, but we do not know her spiritual progress. Moreover, it is a question if her parents knew it either when she was alive. 1st February 2003, Space Shuttle Columbia was at 61 kilometers from Earth spinning at 26,000 kilometers per hour. There were 13 minutes to reach. All eyes of the world were fixed on the screen of NASA's control cabin. On the 12th day itself, Kalpana had finished her deputed work of 16 days and went to sleep. Shuttle Problem Solver On the 12th day, Shuttle had some problem. There was a pin drop silence in control room. How to do repairs? The scientist from Earth control room asked to wake up Kalpana. Nobody other than she can do it. Crew mentioned she had gone before two minutes only for a compulsory rest of eight hours. How could they wake her up? But the scientists insisted. Kalpana woke up not by trouble face but happily and repaid continuously for eight hours. When finished, scientists on earth danced like kids and said, Kalpana, you are great. Selflessness. When asked, what is your inspiration behind this? Kalpana answered, if my shuttle, my experiments are beneficial to whole world, then I'm not bothered about my body, let it be vanished. Did she know? Only in 13 minutes of matter, when a line of fire was seen on screen, Bush missed his heartbeat. Whole world wept in sorrow. Experiment successful, but Kalpana got absorbed into universe. Panchatattva. Kalpana Chavla Auditorium Hall. From 1997 to 2003, Kalpana's Papaji and Mamiji were in America. After Kalpana's demise, they came back to India. President Bush personally phoned Papaji and said we have built an auditorium hall in Texas University in memory of Kalpana. Kalpana Chavla Auditorium Hall, KC Hall, by spending $20 million, you should come for its inauguration. Papaji said, we do not want to come to America anymore. Bush sent letter in his handwriting, emailed, requesting that until they come, the hall will remain closed. He also sent return tickets to them. President Bush and Kalpana When Papaji went to USA for inauguration, President Bush himself held his hand and drive away running to the rooms of White House and showed him where he and Kalpana drank coffee, where they saw computer games together, where they talked. He sat near his feet and wept heavily. Bush, who was anxious to wipe away both to Papaji, that was the greatness of his daughter Kalpana. He said to Papaji, your daughter was not a human being, she was beyond that. Homage to Kalpana Chavla. All the members of the parliament, President Bush, senators, governors, friends and relatives of the mission crew members were gathered on the hill to pay homage. 90% of people were friends and relatives of Kalpana. In that crowd, Papaji saw 300 American young students wearing jeans and crying. He went to one student and asked, Why are you crying? He asked, Who are you? Kalpana's father. The student touched his feet in Indian way. 
If Kalpana was so great, her father will be more than that. Papaji lifted him up and hugged and said, Why you 300 students have attached with Kalpana? He said, Kalpana spent the money from her bank account for education of us all 300 students. Savings and Investment Her mother cried heavily. I scolded you for not living luxurious life in spite of fat salary and asked you where you spend the money. Now when you are not there, I came to know about it. Papaji went home, saw her passbook, the account was closed. It was closed four days before the Columbia went in space. The last transaction was for three lakh dollars donated to a bird protection organization. Kalpana loved birds and animals. She used to say, save my earth. It is very fragile. You don't know when will it collapse. Are we grateful to our mother earth? Kalpana gave lesson by her living. She went for space mission by closing her account as if she knew that she will not come back. The account of living is also closed. Kalpana Habits There in USA, Kalpana Chavla Habits name is given to habit she had, the way she lived, as if any scientist is given name to his invention. After her demise, it was in print of newspapers that Kalpana is still alive for America. Any good habit is known as Kalpana habit. In 150 countries, there are textbooks in schools in name of Kalpana, not as a scientist but as value learning. The lessons by Kalpana how to lead life ideally. In 1988, she purchased a bottle to drink water. That bottle she used till her end, 2003. She never drank mineral water, only tap water. She used to say, save water, electricity, petrol. These are precious resources of earth. Don't waste it. My earth is fragile. Recycle plastic, glass, paper. She never wrapped presents as the wrap is ultimately pinned never gave a bouquet. She asked Papaji also not to dodge a tax of five paisa. Leading life by example, Kalpana showed how to live in Grihastashram. Then I will show how the Vanaprastashram is, Papaji said. Papaji came back, sold all his wealth, made a charitable trust of it. He instituted Nirmal Dham for old people. There are 200 people who are retired army officers, colonels, captains, gynecologists. Those people deprived of their children's love live here proudly, happily. Monthly expense for ashram is 15 lakh rupees. He takes care of these 200 old people, 39 orphan children and 3000 school children. Yearly turnover of his business was 5000 crore rupees. He closed all. This 75 years old man lives like a sannyasi. Who are the school children? These are the boys selling small things of food, distributing papers, polishing boots, sons of hawkers, rickshawalas, who has no mother or father. Monthly 15,000 rupees expense of these students for their education, clothing, books, etc. till graduation and then again up to getting job. Papaji has taken pledge for it. Three big posh schools for them. Kalpana's parents took inspiration from their daughter and changed their lifestyle. This may be the first example in the world. Swami Vivekananda and Kalpana Swamiji wore saffron kafani, Kalpana wore saffron spacesuit. An American scientist from Ohio University compared Swami Vivekananda and Kalpana. Swami Vivekananda was the first person who built a bridge between India and USA 110 years ago and told us about Sanat and Bharat. He says to her father that after 110 years again, a star, your daughter, 
built bridge between USA and India and told us about modern India. Swamiji lived for 39 years, 12th Jan 1863 to 4th July 1902. Kalpana lived for 42 years, 1st July 1961 to 1st Feb 2003. Swamiji turned over the world in his mission with his lectures like a cyclone for nine years, from 1893 to 1902. Kalpana became astronaut in 1994 and in 2003, the last mission again nine years.